Okay, we're going to have a look at civil engineering design concepts and we're going to focus particularly on uh, the civil engineering design of structures or structural engineering design. Um, the main aspect of a civil engineer's role in the design process is to ensure that the uh, loads and forces, uh, deflections, stresses, strains, uh, be they sort of shrinkage, temperature, uh, strange strains, um, imposed on the structure during its use, during its life, um, to ensure that the, the structure is capable of resisting those, dealing with those uh, loads, deflections, etc. Um, so that is what we're going to focus on in this lecture and look at how the designer civil engineering design engineer would go about um, undertaking that design uh, and initially we're just going to look at basic uh, design concepts so if we look at loads and load paths if we imagine that um, as we're sat in this room sat on, on a chair so that chair will have a seat and legs and and they are you know that that chair is a structure in its own right so that um you know that the load that's imposed on that chair has to find its way through a load path uh, into uh, a reaction somewhere which which stops it from moving so we we'll, we will have this load here and without being able to generate a reaction that will move uh, the, the the chair in the direction of the load so obviously that's an undesirable thing to happen so we have to make sure that there is adequate resistance to that load so you know somebody will have looked at the structure of that chair and made sure that the load as it's transferred through the seat of the chair can be transferred into the legs of the chair so that load will find its way coming down the legs into the floor of the building um, at, at this sort of level here and that's the first point, if you like, at which the civil engineer treats this element design as part of his or her project. So these loads come into the floor uh, and they are then transferred through the floor, either spanning in one direction if there are, if it's a slab, beam and slab arrangement. So the slabs, are the, the, the beams are sort of in this, axes here or this slab might span two ways so you will get some of the load coming in in this axis uh, to whatever is holding the slab up so that might be beams at the edge of the floor at the walls it might be the walls themselves that take uh, take the load down further but in in this building here for example that we're sitting in uh, there is a uh, a column at this location here and that column you know the, these these columns at various locations around the room will then take their share of the load down as an axial load in in a reinforced concrete column in this particular case but that might be a steel column uh, typically civil engineering projects that we will look at will either be steel framed or, or concrete framed um, and those columns will pick up similar loads from you know other floors uh, so that these loads will find their way in so this this load in this column will increase as it goes down and it will have taken loads from floors above um, it may take services directly connected to the column or, or um, traveling up through the floors in the columns but ultimately all these loads 
come down the column and then they find their way into a foundation at ground level or just below ground level um, so those loads at ground level will generate a reaction and that's what we talked about so this this load here and all the loads from all the self weights of these materials in the in the slab in the columns in the walls the services the windows the the, the wall coverings the slate tiles on the roof they will all come down under gravity um, and then will need to be reacted at this level by a reaction from the earth uh, at which the foundation sits upon which the foundation sits and part of the civil engineering design process is to calculate the ability of this soil at this level to resist that structure and it may or may not be able to do that on its own and then the civil engineer has options as to how he or she goes about dealing with those if the direct load on the um, ground at the foundation level is not sufficient if it's not sufficiently competent to resist that load with a reaction then we may choose to design piles and those piles may operate on skin friction reactions or they may operate on um, end bearing at another strata level which might be down here might be the bedrock level and that bedrock might be competent enough to provide an end bearing reaction through this pile or a combination of skin friction and end bearing but either way there has to be a load path such that this load can be transferred through each individual element of the structure down into the foundation where it is reacted by um, the ground in which the foundation sits the loads that are applied to a structure are take various forms and we need to split them up into their various um, types of loading because there are different levels of risk associated with those um, so we will go on to look at natural loads natural loads such as wind loading on the structure snow loading on the structure the self weight of the structural elements and the loads that are imposed on the structure are themselves um, under gravity a natural load um, but those gravitational elements will take the form of permanent loads so the self weight of the columns and the slabs for example will be permanent and we will treat them slightly differently to how we treat variable actions uh, or loads variable ones being the ones that this chair for example isn't necessarily always here and nor are the people in the room um, but the engineer has to decide what level of use uh, the, the, the building or structure will be put to and determine um, those loads uh, in accordance with accepted practices and those accepted practices are set out in documents called the codes of practice um, and if an engineer follows those codes of practice uh, then he or she is deemed to have discharged their responsibility with regard to making sure that the structure has been correctly designed and that is if you like the fundamental concept behind civil engineering structural engineering design just quickly before we move on uh, there is a, another classification of loads accidental loads so it is necessary to design this structure not only for the self weights and the loads that will um, be imposed on the structure during its use uh, but also for loads which wouldn't ordinarily occur but it is 
expected that the designer will allow for uh, these loads that aren't part of its normal use but are required by the codes of practice again to deal with uh, an acceptable level of risk which it is deemed that a particular structure should have to take and that will vary from structure type to structure type so for example a nuclear power station will have to deal with different accidental loads compared to a conventional power, st power station for example or a stadium um, sports stadium or a bridge for example may need to deal with accidental loads from errant vehicles which go out of control and uh, can hit the various elements of the structure the parapets or the substructure below if, if it, we're talking about an errant vehicle leaving the road below the bridge deck um, so that very quickly then has dealt with the types of loads and the essential uh, concept of any design which requires there to be a path for those loads to be transferred through the structure competently into um, a place where it can be resisted by a reaction typically a reaction at ground level to in a foundation